Hi, I'm Real Genetic Demon, and this is Everspace, and this is on the PlayStation 4, um, but I've also got it on the PC, because GOG have got, currently got a winter sale on, spend, spend about £11, or about $20, and you get Everspace, and another game, I can't remember what it's called, Fantasy Kingdom I think it is, um, but I thought I'd go through the subtleties of, of this, I haven't played it a huge amount, I've managed to get through about three seconds of it, it's a roguelike space combat game i think that's the best way of describing it so every time you die you get to continue i won't break i won't spoil the story too much because i haven't got too much through the story but i do know um and you do know early on very early on because it shows you when you start the game that you're actually a clone and every time you die you then break out from the facility again steal another spacecraft and continue on your run so that's how the roguelike element works basically you die and you respawn as the next clone with the memories of the past and you want to continue on. So the story kind of runs from there. It's kind of clever that way because although it's procedurally generated and things change every time you play it, there's a, there's a running theme to it. There is actually a completion and then I guess you get started again as another clone. So um, we'll continue though. We've got hardcore option though there, by the way, interesting enough. And I've also got the expansion set. Now on the PlayStation 4, just out of interest, um, if you pay the £11.98, I think it is, uh, UK, um, you get the expansion as well, which includes a couple of extra ships um, as a DLC. It was, a D it was an actual DLC. It wasn't, it's not like a microtransaction. You can play the game without having that. But the difference is £2. I think it's worth the £2 pounds instead of paying five or extra to have that ex uh, by itself anyway so continue so i've run a couple of runs it, you'll see in a second it, it's got a number here that's attached to this a number of sort of um um clones i've had so far so at the bottom if you look at the bottom it says colonial interceptor and it says zero zero nine that's the ninth clone i'm currently on so you've got these different ships that you can steal initially um this is the this is this is one of them they all handle differently um so this is one of the first ships um you also have you also have different ones that you can buy when you've got enough money. Um, the way that the, the roguelike sort of builds on your skills and whatever else it is, is by actually giving you credits. And credits kind of allow you to buy things at this setup screen every time you go along. So um, we've also got uh, colonial gunships, which I can't afford yet because I've only got 4,700 credits. And then you've got the colonial sentinel. I quite like this one. This is my favourite so far because it's quite fast moving. Um, there's, there's details down the side. You've got a setup screen. Um, this allows you to change loadouts, enhancements for the ship, and colours, obviously. Very important. You can find decals floating around space. No microtransactions here. Thank goodness. Perks. Now, this is kind of your, your what you're doing as a pilot. So, so you can build up things like, I've already started building on critical hits, critical hit chances, the map itself, so that it can show different things. So, natural hazards on the map and other things. Resources, which is basically allows you to craft... Um, <clears throat> I'll decrease the cost of uh, repairing a ship in flight, which is quite handy if I'm honest, um, and various other bits and pieces along the way. So I'm going to concentrate, I'm actually going to go with this one because I've been wanting to do this one for a while. This is the crafting costs. Crafting costs are really useful because you can reduce the amount of cost to repair the ship in flight. Because there's like lots of items that you need, you know, you might need power cells to repair, to repair uh, a, a, an engine or something similar in flight. But I'll show you as we go on. So we're going to do that one, and it also opens up other things, so it increases the amount of resources you gain from that, but I need 4,000, so I'm not going to do that yet. Very expensive, you see. Uh, 700 left, so let's see what we can find for 700. Might go with this one, which is nanobot infect, uh, uh, efficiency. These is basically how much they repair the hull. So I think this might be the one to go for, or is this an interesting one? No. Right, okay, so we'll go with that one. You've got your stats, um, so how far you've got. You've got kind of goals that you can produce as you go along, which is kind of cool. Number of runs, this is my ninth run, obviously, so there's eight runs previously. You can win, you see there's a number of wins as well. Hardcore runs if you're really into it. Capacity of ship. Blueprints, you can pick up blueprints for extra weapons and other things as you go along. I haven't, as yet, um, found anything other than weapons and primary weapons. So you've got primary and secondary weapons. That you can craft which is useful because you can craft them on the fly so so you can craft extra missiles when you run out um, and then there's the story the flashbacks uh, where you where you spawn and you wake up as a clone you can see your clone over that side of the screen there um, <clears throat> corporations and whatever else it is now you can actually the thing is it's because it's a roguelike and it's and you die and dying is actually part a key 
um, game factor. Um, I'm going to launch now. I'm going to go with a, I'm going to go with a slightly easier because then we can actually show you show, show you around a little bit. Um, you lose, but it's good because it does this as well. So it actually tells you what's going on. Look, lower threat levels, more traders, more natural, you know, fewer natural hazards and all this kind of stuff, and the way it was meant to be played. But we're going to go with uh, we're clinging onto our life. We're going to do that. We're going to do easy. So. Um, and I can show you around a little bit easier. The 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 maneuverability of the ship is unreal. Um, but one of the things I really like about it okay. is you've Sorry, obviously got your like sort this. of you know left and right and your you know up and down with your sort of your, your viewing of the thing. But then you've got you can strafe up and down, which is really handy. You've got acceleration, reverse, which you can't really see you here, um, and then. You've got your missiles and all the other bits and pieces are on top of the screen. Um, if you push the middle button here, you get what you've got. And then you can start upgrading things straight away, assuming you've got the right kind of equipped stuff in the bottom. At the bottom there, there's like the resources. It's good to just get a mixture of all of them I've found so far from the whole thing. Um, you've only got your repair on top of here, if I just go across as we do it. So you've got the repairing the systems, which is the reason why you've got gases. You see it says the resources required, what's required to repair each part, which is the reason why you've got to collect them. The thing is that it's got to keep you busy by doing other things. I'm in a medium risk area because it's got a, uh, this is because I've upgraded my scanner as we've gone along. Um, data, blueprints and codecs of course. Um, so what we're looking for is the little dots on the screen, we've got one over here. So what we've got here to collect. So we got a certain length of time because we're on the run from this evil corporation where they've been holding me as a as a as a as a as a captive. And that should have collected that plasma field. Yes it did. So mineable gas. So we go out here, we do a bit of mining. Collect a few resources. It's quite a surprise, actually, that, that we've, we've not run into anybody yet. Oh, in fact, that we have. They're out there over here. Uh, where are you? There they are. Somewhere. There. Do you see them? Red dots. Outlaws. Let's go play with the outlaws. Fire a few missiles at them. This could be a sticky situation here. Yeah. I like the computer, by the way. The computer's called Hive, and he and he does talk to you. That's one down. Nah, drones. They're non-piloted. They're just homing on you. But if you like space explosions, yep, this is the game for you. Lots of space explosions going on. And look, there's a base here. Outlaw base. With some missile launchers. Oh god. Let's steal that. And in here, look. You see there's like crates. Now these contain tech which you can steal and use. Oh. My terrible fly in there. Alright, so got decal. Oh got black. It's a decal. Very useful. And some nanobots. That's alright. What we got incoming? Incoming. Outlaws. Now you've got missiles you can lock on with, so you can move, change, you know, sort of between each one. Oh, God. You can be an outlaw yourself as well. You can opt to shoot at the, um, take the credits. The missiles, the, the, the weapon systems tend to auto lock, which is cool. But there's infinite sort of, ah, I say infinite replayability. There's good play replayability in the sense that, you know, you 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 can uh, you know keep playing as much as you you really want. Thus far, it's it's had me sort of thinking about it when I'm not thinking about it. So to move on from the sector before you get um, attacked by oh by the way I'll show you the inside you've got the cockpit view if you've got VR by the way you can you can look around obviously the the whole cockpit you can't in this really but uh, sort to of get a view of it and then you've got without completely if you really want I quite like the external view because it looks kind of cool um, but to leave each sector you basically point towards this thing it powers you up and it uses your fuel which is your gauge on the far 
right hand side of your screen and then you've got an option to go to where you want to go next so we've got medium risk or low risk and then you're working your way basically the jump gate at the end there i'm going to go with the medium risk here because uh you know running on already 10 minutes of viewing okay <clears throat> okay who's incoming first get the afterburns on I just like the fact that it's 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 that that there's those roguelike elements to it, but they're good enough that that keep it. You keep you coming back because, and I like combat. I like space combat. I always did. Um, I do like the elements of trading that you get with uh, with 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 other games, but I do like space combat. Oh, we'll take that. Ouch! Somebody's got missiles on me. And you can swap tech if I can get to it. And you can swap tech. It just kind of pauses the whole game. So you can swap what you've currently got for something else. It tells you what's better and worse. It's kind of... It's fine to do. So so swap and we salvage what we've got. And you basically end up with some scrap parts out of it. So... Have a missile. Have another missile. I love the maneuverability of the ship. It's just, um, it's amazing. It's great fun. So there's something, there's something nearby. There's another, whoa, there. Nanobots, that'll cool. Take that. But because the ship's so maneuverable, you can, you can literally hide behind things. You know, you can go, whoa, I'm going to chuck myself behind the back of here. And be out the way of things. Let's have a little look. What else have we got? Incoming enemy. Let's go play with these guys. Because the, 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 the ultimate game is, uh, you know, to be able to boost your character up is money. Although you want to make your way through the level, you also want to be taking on things and upgrading things. There are rare weapons, there are more difficult, you know, useful weapons. Um, this ship's only got the one set of weapons, I think, yeah, that's the main primary one. It's got a lot of power regeneration, you see, so... But we've got missiles, we've got EMP generator, that, that'll, that if we use that shortly, what you'll see happen is that these guys will get knocked out by it. Let's get some bit of speed on, Let's stop messing around with them. Nice spotted, mate. I'm literally jinking around the, the bullets. Yes. Have a missile. Yes. Oh, missile shield breakers. They're quite handy. We'll take them. Uh, and we'll take them over the corrosive missiles for the moment. So we'll swap and we'll salvage those. Incoming. Now you also get elite enemies. I mean, it's 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 proper roguelike in that sense. You get elite enemies that you have to fight, um, or if you can choose to fight, you can you can choose to be the bad guy. You can shoot the your friendlies down that you might find because there's a couple of mining corporations out here that won't bother you normally. So this is the fuel that I was talking about, and the fuel allows you to jump. Try to ram one actually. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a. Ah, come on! Ah, oh, I'm gonna shoot you down. I'm bored of ship ramming you. There, go, bye. So we'll get out of the sector because we've had enough. So we'll just charge up and we'll leave. And then we'll choose the next one to go on to. We've got that one. And each sort of 
um, section is interspersed with these jump gates. They're the part of this running, this escaping, this this clones getting away. Multiple hostiles incoming. So these are these are um, good guys, or um, effectively the whoa Some missiles. That'll teach you. So these are the good guys, effectively. I'm just going to attack these guys though, because because uh, otherwise this video will go on forever. And once you start attacking a great big cruiser like this, I'm going to be in trouble. So what we got is a trader. You've also got trading transports and all other kinds of things. There's not just stuff floating around space. There's traders that you can find that you can trade for, for more weapons and whatever else it is. So there's not just that. There's a, there's a quite a few, a few things. Let's see if we can get something off these guys. Whoa! Jumped! Eat a missile. Let's get hills. Let's see if we can get some cover. See? Take it in, Pete. That's just knocked out their entire drives and their ships for a bit. Ah! Admirable staff. Give him a situation. Oh yeah. It is a bit easier on easy. There we go. And it's all over. As simple as that. But here's the important part. So you've done that, and you've got your loot, and it loads up, and you're back, and you're all over to start again, to take the run. It even, it even comments, the character comments on it, I feel good about this run. So it's like the clones know that they've been killed and that they're going on, so they shouldn't have memories, but they do. The computer knows that something on the ship knows there's something wrong about it, you know. It's good, I like it. I, I like the fact that there's actually a story with it, um, and that there's there's more to e uh, Everspace than just the, the usual. I... I, I it just brings the space combat though mainly out of the whole thing um, and the space combat is just phenomenal it's just there's it's all movement and whatever else it is when you find yourself darting amongst a giant sort of huge asteroid flying through the innards of it it's pretty cool or a gigantic hulking wreck um, as I say it's it's random so it just you know depends what you find as you go along but anyway um, so I've, I've been Real Genetic Demon thank you for watching please feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video bye bye now